everyone, welcome or welcome back. Um, my name's Bronte. Um, just, I'll just see my cushion. Um, uh, yeah, hi. Um, this week we're doing book chat stuff. Um, so it's, it's very sunny today, which is good because <laughs> I filmed this entire video yesterday. This is take two. Um, it was pouring with rain. The the video quality was very poor. So <laughs> we're doing it again. Um, yeah, um, I just want to do a quick uh, like chatty segment um, talking about some new additions to my book collection that I kind of got um, over Christmas and um, also talk about the book that I'm currently reading and the book that I'm going to start next. Um, yeah, so I hope that's something that sounds interesting to you. Um, let's get started. Uh, so the first books, two books I want to talk about are these. Um, Bleak House by Charles Dickens and A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, these are beautiful cloth bound penguin editions um, that were gifted to me by my boss for Christmas, which um, is such a lovely gift. Also, uh, we had a discussion about the Tale of Two Cities cover because it's knitting guys look at that isn't that great um we've also been talking about how great that would be as a tattoo um yeah very cool anyway um sidetrack well I'm getting sidetracked um so yeah um my boss is quite big I, I guess like a dickens fan um i've never read any charles dickens it's always seemed a bit kind of overwhelming but um yeah she thought that these were two good ones to start with and um, she said about Bleak House, she said it's kind of, I think what she said is it's kind of like a soap opera <laughs> or like, I don't know, something that's quite easy to digest in actual fact. So that's, that's exciting. Um, oh, there's illustrations in these as well. That's cool. Um, yeah, so I'm very um, intrigued to start these. They're very heavy. Um, I think because the paper stock is very nice as well. Um, so I think these are going to be ones that are kind of on the back burner at home. Yeah, just looking at this bleak house. <laughs> bleak house is uh, just, just looking at how many pages. It's actually uh, almost a thousand pages, this book. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is real heavy. <laughs> Um, and A Tale of Two Cities is nowhere near as heavy, actually. Um, yeah, this has very different paper. I think that they've used a different paper in this book to make it... It's like a thinner paper, so the book isn't, like, absolutely gigantic. Interesting. Okay. So that's those two. Um, and then some books I bought for myself. Oh, gosh, it's so sunny. Um, <laughs> some books I bought for myself. Um got this one first, Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. Um, this is a spin-off from the um, These Violent Delights duology. Um, it has one of the same characters from that duology. Um, I was going to wait for the paperback of this book, um, but then Waterstones had this in the 50% off hardback sale after Christmas, and I had to get it because it means I can read it sooner, right? Because it takes, um, her paperbacks come out like a, at least a good year after the hardbacks. So yeah, I would have had to wait a long time. Um, so this is like kind of like a spy novel, um, but obviously it's got like a, uh, what's the word? Like fantasy element because the main character is immortal. Um, so the back, assassin, immortal, spy. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be good. Um, so yeah, it's set like four years after the um, events in these violent delights and our violent ends. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I think Claire Gong is a really great author. So yeah, this should be good. And also it's got a cool cover. I think that's nice. Um, the like cover art that her books tend to get are, is really good. So yeah, that's that one. And then um, we have this, which is 
Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. I was also going to wait for this paperback. <laughs> um, haven't been very good at that, have I? Um, so the reason why I have this in hardback is because I went to um, I went to a place with my parents. Um, it's in West Yorkshire um, called Salts Mill. Um, it's a lovely place if you ever get a chance to visit. It's like um, they have a lot of um, David Hockney's work there because he is from close to where the place is um, and yeah they have a bookshop and they have like a little kind of like art material section and it's just a really nice place to go um, and when we went I thought ooh, I'm gonna treat myself to a book at Salt's Mill and they had this book and it's signed um, it's a signed copy which is why I got the hardback so yeah um, I've never really heard of Juno Dawson, but she's written loads of fiction. There's like 10, 12 books in, in the front here. So yeah, um, cool. Uh, yeah, this book sounds really great. Um, it's kind of like about a branch of the government that is kind of witchcrafty. Um, handling of supernormal events and incidents to uphold the tradition of witchcraft in the United Kingdom and to safeguard our continued legacy. And um, the like law behind this is that the Anne Berlin founded this society, which I think is really cool, or like this branch of government, which I think is very cool. Yeah, so this is, this is exciting. Um, I will say that I need to guard this neon pink cover with my life because um, I've had books with um, covers or like this colour on the cover before and it fades so bad like uh my copy of my year of rest and relaxation that has this colour on the spine and on the front cover and the spine is faded so bad so um this will be kept in our room where um the books don't get sunlight really um and i'm also like tucking it right in where like the sun can't get to it <laughs> so hopefully this won't fade because it is a signed first edition um yeah okay that's a little better <laughs> um i just pulled a, a blind across um okay so the last book i want to talk about I'm just gonna <laughs> the last book i want to talk about is babel um i'm reading this at the moment how many pages on it i'm on page 173 I, I've stopped at the like beginning of, of, of chapter 10 um last night uh this book like wow um <laughs> I've heard lots of people talking about this and saying what an amazing book it is um it really is an amazing book um I think it's quite like I guess I think I think it's quite an important book um it deals a lot with colonialism and like I don't know like yeah quite big issues um I feel like I'm not so eloquent to be able to speak about this to be honest but um I'm just I'm loving it and I think that the idea of um the like the idea about translations being um it's kind of in the front right it says an act of translation is always an act of betrayal. And I think that's really interesting because it's something I've never really thought about, um, about how you can never kind of translate something completely as it, sh as it should be, if that makes sense. And like um, you as the translator hold power as to like what, um, what is going to be understood from your translation and it's really interesting and so well researched too like wow yeah amazing um I kind of it's making me want to read more of RF Kwang's other work but I know that the Poppy Wars is like truly heartbreaking <laughs> so I don't know if I'm ready for it um we'll see we'll see how this book ends because I don't know it's I don't, I don't know how it's gonna end so <laughs> yeah um we'll see but I'm absolutely loving this book I think it's amazing also the um the cover art is so good like so nice I'm really pleased I managed to snag a um a bookmark from from Waterstones um they they just had these on the counter and I was like 
can I please take one? And the guy thought it was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, on the back it says, we are here to make magic with words, which is a quote from the book. Um, yeah, amazing. Um, so yeah, and then the other book I want to talk about, one more, is Hellbent by Leo Bardugo. I will put a picture up on the screen because it comes out tomorrow, which will be the 10th of January tomorrow. Um, I'm so excited, guys. Um, I have it on pre-order, it's been shipped, so I, I think it's going to arrive tomorrow for publication day, which is really exciting. Um, I really wanted the Waterstones exclusive edition because it had sprayed edges. I'll see if I can find a picture of the sprayed edges. It is sold out, um, which is a real shame. So I just have the like hardback edition. Um, if another kind of exclusive edition comes into stock, um, I'll get it. <laughs> I love Leo Bardugo. Um, I love Ninth House and Hellbent is the sequel to Ninth House. Um, yeah, I I'm so excited. So what I'm going to do is when Ninth House, sorry, when Hellbent arrives, I'm going to put Babel on hold and read Hellbent. Um, and when I finish it, I will come back to Babel. Um, just because I'm so excited for um, Hellbent. I, I think I feel like I've been waiting for the book for almost a year so yeah I'm really really excited. Um, okay I think that's it. Um, um, yeah so I think that's it. I'm going to put the uh, this little footage clip thingy first and then um, I'll show you my bookcase tour. Um, yeah if um, you see stuff on my shelves and you don't know what it is or like or you know you want to know about it or say like what was that book again um yeah let me know in the comments and I will do my very best to let you know um thank you so much for watching this little bit and I hope this was interesting um and I will see you next week bye enjoy the tour okay so in here we've got kind of a mishmash. Um, I've got my Le Bardugo shelf, um, the space for Hellbent. Uh, this is just the dust jacket for Babel because I take it off when I'm reading or I take dust jackets off hardbacks when I'm reading. Um, and then this shelf is like Chloe Gong and then some kind of like misc uh, fantasy I guess. And at the bottom, um, I've got all my Ellie Griffiths books, Ariadne, which I did not enjoy. Um, and then a couple of like history non-fictions. Um, and this is a, a photo album my sister made for me. Um, yeah, so that's all the stuff that's in here. Not tons. Um, I wish I had space for this in the other room, but I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, hi, um, bookshelf tour take two. So, um, we're going again, let's start. Um, so these are our bookshelves. Um, I have all of this one and the four bottom shelves of the second, or the middle one, sorry. And then the rest of the stuff is my boyfriend's stuff. He collects like film books and VHS tapes <laughs> and DVDs. Um, yeah, we have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so yeah, let's start with the the bottom. Um, so I'm just gonna sit on the floor. Um, down here I have um the the bottom shelves are wider than or like taller than the others. Um we had these bookcases like made for us and that's what we decided was a good idea for our like bigger books. Um so yeah, I have like knitting magazines. And then like sewing and knitting books, um, as you can see, I'm running out of space, so <laughs> stuff's kind of getting shoved in uh, the top. Um, and then at the other end, yay, the sun's out. Um, on the other side, I've got like art books. There's a couple of um, gardening books because I love Monty Don. Um, <laughs> and uh, cook did I say cookbooks? And some graphic novels at the end, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, okay, so 
uh, this second shelf, also, I just want to add, I have, like, loads of blind box toys. Um, so, <laughs> they're, like, dotted all over the place, just as an FYI. Um, I got really addicted to them, probably, like, end of 2021. So, uh, yeah, I have quite a lot of them. <laughs> um, so, um, I've got all of my back issues of Pom Pom Magazine, and then, like, non-fiction stuff. Behind the crocodile is, like, poetry. And then I have some essays, and then all of my Sherlock Holmes books, and also I actually have an Agatha Christie there now. Um, yeah, Pom Pom changed their format, so uh, these books here, or these magazines rather, are the newer ones, and they don't fit on my shelves because they're slightly too tall. So I need to shovel some stuff around. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's Dead Famous, I just finished reading that. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about that in the... Um, chatty segment um okay so next shelf up I've, again i've run out of space um i have deborah harkness um and then ve schwab uh yeah uh so this is like a collection of two books in one you know like they're like duology or whatever i only read the first one i didn't really enjoy it so i haven't read the second one um, and then over here is kind of like some like dark academia vibes. <laughs> um, we have my eight copies of The Secret History. Please don't judge me. Um, I just love that book so much. <laughs> um, I've got the Olivier Blake, The Maidens. Um, I didn't enjoy that book. I was like fully sold by the cover. Um, yeah, if you know me, you'll know that the kind of like Greek mythology is one of my like special interests. Um, and that cover spoke to me, it like spoke to my soul, but <laughs> um, I didn't really enjoy the book that much. Um, I have this lovely, this is like a Waterstones exclusive copy of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Um, why doesn't she write more books? I need more of her books in my life. I really want to reread that, but um, I would like to find it in paperback if possible. Um, okay, next shelf, we have like Philip Pullman stuff. Um, where is the third instalment of the Book of Dust? Please, Philip. I need to know what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I have uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf. This is like a numbered foils edition. Um, but it's such an intense story. Like, I haven't read the second part of it yet. Which is Moon Witch, Spider King, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But um, oh, I don't know if I can put myself through that. It's such amazing writing, but... Wow, it's a lot. Um, okay, and then we've got the His Dark Materials trilogy. Um, oh, this is an advanced reader's copy of the Book of Dust I found. Oh, sorry, the first uh, volume, La Belle Sauvage. Um, I found that in the charity shop, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I have my Harry Potter books. Um, a Dowry of Blood is just propped up here because, um, I don't know, it's a nice cover. Although I did say... I think I did say in a previous video that it looks kind of like Twilight fan fiction, which it does, but I don't hate that. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, also, stuff's a bit disorganised. Like, this shouldn't really be here with, like, this, like, kind of fantasy stuff, but here we are. Um, I don't have space for everything to kind of sit together. So, yeah. Um, next shelf up is uh, kind of, like, classic -y stuff. Um, I found this penguin book of classical myths in a charity shop. It's very cool. Um, actually, the Greek mythology and this one, I got those secondhand too. Um, Circe's in here. Shouldn't be there. <laughs> um, also, sorry if you hear that whistling sound. The When it's windy, there's like our building makes really like whistly sounds. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, so then I have this like book about vampires here. This is... Um, What's the, like, subheading of this book? Lord Byron Count Dracula. My boyfriend found this for me secondhand. Um, if you don't know, if you, or if you can't tell, we do a lot of secondhand book shopping. <laughs> um, this sounds really cool, but again, it shouldn't let really be in between Cersei and Ovid. Like, why are you there? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I have, like, the Odyssey, like, some Euripides plays, um, the Iliad. I can't get through this translation. I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I need something. Can anyone re recommend a translation of the, the Iliad? This is... Who's this translated by? Uh, 
Translated with an introduction by Martin Hammond. Yeah, I feel like it's just like a budget one. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I'll put that back later. Some like more like traditional classics maybe. Um, I've got some Brighthead Revisited. I haven't read that, but I would like to. And then I have like Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre, um, Picnic at Hanging Rock, The Yellow Wallpaper. Really love that. Um, and then I have Dickens. Um, these were gifted to me for Christmas by my boss. I'll talk about those. Um, and then, yeah, I have The Grapes of Wrath. That's my dad's copy. I haven't read it. Um, some Virginia Woolf. I really want to get on board with Virginia Woolf because of how much Sylvia Plath liked her, but, mm, yeah. And then I have, like, these are, like, some pins. Um, my pin collection. It's an X-Files one. Uh, so I've rip and dip. My boyfriend got that in America. Um, also, these are some My Neighbor Totoro playing cards, which my parents got from Japan many years ago, which is very cool. Um, I think they, they ordered them from Japan. Um, yeah. Okay, and then up here is, like, a horror sci-fi section. So um, I've got, like, HP Lovecraft, um... Frankenstein, uh, this Chinese Miaville book, which was so weird, but like I really uh, like I liked it. Um, Meddling Kids, I love this book. I wish it was a series so badly. Um, and then there's also some nonfiction up here, so you can see there's a Mind Hunter book, and then I also have the Zodiac book. Um, I love that stuff. Sorry, I'm a millennial. <laughs> um, I love true crime. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I've got my Jeff Vandermeer stuff, um, yeah, Annihilation is definitely my favourite Jeff Vandermeer, sorry to, like, be, I don't know, I feel like that's the predictable one. Um, oh, he's back with us, hello. Um, and then I've got some Grady Hendrix, I really enjoyed the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I thought that was great. Um, and then up here is, like, Stephen King, uh, some some more classic C's stuff because they don't fit down there. Um, Stephen Graham Jones, I uh, love those books, both of those, so good. I'm really excited for the sequel of My Heart is a Chainsaw. Um, yeah. And then right up at the top, I've got like, um, what I would say is more like, I don't know, like modern female writers. So like Ali Smith, Sayaka Murata, Ruth Ozeki, um, Elif Batuman, I'm waiting for the sequel of that to be, of The Idiot, that's The Idiot, sorry. I'm waiting for that to be out in paperback, the sequel. Is it called Either Or? I think it is. And then also we've got Stephanie Mayer, Queen. <laughs> um, and then this section is kind of like more horror stuff, I guess, or like weird fiction. Um, yeah, I thought that the death of Jane Lawrence sat really well there between Rebecca and Mexican Gothic. And then the three books at the end, we've got Twilight, Interview with the Vampire and Dracula. You know, they've got to stick together. <laughs> um, a Diary of Blood should probably go up there. But I don't know if it will fix. It's quite tall. Um, okay. And that's, that's that whole shelf. And then coming back this way. Um, okay, so oh, this is a lovely card that um, I was sent. Um, uh, so we've got Atwood, um, the copy of The Rubber Bride I have is first edition, so I dare not read it. Um, <laughs> I have it in paperback now, both copies of that I found second hand. Um, I think I've read pretty much all of these. Uh, I haven't read The Rubber Bride yet and I haven't read The Testaments, but uh, on, on writers and writing I haven't gotten to that yet. Or Good Bones. All of, pretty much every single one of these I got second hand. Um, yeah, let's put that back. Um, got an X-Files book, found that second hand. This is a French edition of, uh, the first book of Rivers of London, which, don't you think it looks a bit like Sherlock Holmes? Like, <laughs> I love that. Um, I got that second hand when I was in Paris, um, quite a few years ago now. Um, and then we kind of go into, like, I don't know what this section is. There's a couple of <laughs> sci-fi, like... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, This is How You Lose the Time War, I haven't read that yet. Um, Angela Carter, and then like I have this kind of non-fiction section, apart from Shadow Dance, that's a novel. Um, yeah, 
Mad Woman in the Attic. I desperately wanted to read that when I was doing Wuthering Heights A level, but um, my um, uh, what's the word? My college library didn't have it, um, and then I I found that in a charity shop, and I was like, I have to get it. Um, I really want to read it. I haven't read it yet. Um, also, all of these Marina Warner books were charity shop finds, and the biography of Angela Carter that was also a charity shop find. I think this is even an advanced like reader's copy. Um, okay, coming down, I have David Mitchell here. Um, I really uh, love his writing, um, but I haven't read his newest book because um, I, I don't know, I just really didn't like the sound of the concept of it. Um, but then we've got some like fluff from the duster I used. <laughs> um sorry about that um okay and then yeah we've got rivers of london i have all of them and all of the novellas because i'm a ben aronovich fan <laughs> um this is the um uh anniversary edition of rivers of london um which i got at an event i went to like a talk with him and another author um and i had it signed which was very exciting um and then actually hiding this, this is hiding some Terry Pratchett's. I've only read The Colour of Magic and like, I'm really sorry if you're a Terry Pratchett fan, but like, it's just not, it's just not my jam. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, but I did love Good Omens, which is why I thought I'd give them a go. Also, all of those found in the charity shop in like a set. Um, and then, yeah, and then we go into Neil Gaiman. Um, I really want to like Neil Gaiman more than I do. I love American Gods. I've read it twice and I really like Neverwhere. I've also read that twice. Okay, just sitting on the floor now. Um, down here is my Sylvia Plath section. Again, I got loads of these secondhand. Um, sh shuffle a bit closer. Um, so I have like quite a lot of books that are like about her, not necessarily like her poetry, or whatever. Let's just move Hello Kitty. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I went through this like incredible streak of finding loads of her books, loads of books about her in this like one Oxfam bookshop that I always go to. I really think it was the same person like gradually getting rid of their Plath collection for some unknown reason. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, this is a book of her drawings. Um, she was quite a good kind of, as an illustrator, like pen and ink drawings. Um, her journals, um, this is like an amazing thing, um, this is like her, a, a, like a facsimile of her manuscript for Ariel with like, um, crossings out and like corrections and stuff, very cool. Um, this is a book about her, got that second hand, poetry, short stories, uh, poems chosen by Caroline Duffy, letters home, I love her that collection. There's all of the letters that she wrote to her mother. Um, and it was edited by her mum. Um, and then this is a book about her and Ted Hughes and like the, yeah, the story of his, his poetry collection, Birthday Letters. Very interesting. Also look at her, her beautiful hair there. Um, that's a book about her. Um, so is that. All of these found in charity shops. Um, that's a very short story. They did these like Faber stories, like the tiny little editions. That's very cute. Um, this is a book uh, that was about, kind of like about her childhood, but it's mainly just like anecdotes. I wouldn't recommend that one. Um, and then I found this volume two of her like collected letters, found that in a charity shop. And then the one at the bottom, The Haunting of Sylvia Plath. That's such an interesting concept, but um, it's so like densely academic that my brain cannot compute. I need someone to dumb it down for me. <laughs> okay, so here this is one more book about Sylvia. And um, this is uh, like the newest book that's come out about her. Um, that's, yeah, was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Um, I haven't gotten to this yet. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that book yet because it's, it's really huge. Um, okay, so now we've got uh what would i call this section kind of like more i know i said modern female writers earlier but this is kind of like more like uh weird fiction or like um 
I don't, oh, I don't even know. Like, I guess it would, like, a Tessa Mosh fake she's up there. That falls into the, like, unhinged category, doesn't it? But anyway, yeah. Um, woman Eating, uh, Claire Coda. I really liked that. Julia Artfield. I did not enjoy Our Wives Under the Sea, but um, I have uh, the short story collection that she did, Salt Slow. I think that's amazing. Um, I really enjoyed Salt Lick and A Certain Hunger. I also really liked. I think I saw someone saying that they hated that book but i thought it was really great <laughs> um then we've got yeah more stuff here julia arnfield daisy johnson uh, and then atessa moshberg and i've read all of these and i feel like i read a ho homesick for another world last year and i feel like that like stung me like <laughs> i know that she writes like dislikable female characters but that was a bit too much for me seeing them like one after another in a collection of short stories um, did not enjoy it. Um, okay. And then down here is, um, yeah, the books I mentioned earlier, kind of art books, cookbooks, all that stuff. Um, I've graphic novels. Um, yeah, I've got Once and Future. I love that one. Um, and Paper Girls as well. Really love Paper Girls. Um, yeah. And then, um, um, yeah, so here, I, I love this book. This is um, like a critical companion to the X-Files. It's like got a summary for every single episode. Um, yeah, that's really cool. And this one is like, um, uh, what did I say? Yeah, it's like a guide to the world of His Dark Materials, um, with like, uh, all the like kind of science and like geography and stuff behind the books, which is very cool. Both of those, I got them new, but they were like, like on discount. Um, so yeah, you just get up again. <laughs> okay, that's, that's these shelves. Um, I hope this was interesting.